In this video, I'm going to introduce the concept of a residence time, where a residence time is how long a parcel of water stays in a particular control volume. And this is especially important if you try and consider this course, Water Resources, along with environmental engineering, where in environmental engineering, you're going to be looking at rates of chemical transformations, where, which are dependent on time. In our case, just in water resources, it's just nice to know uh, the approximate amount of time that a water body oh, turns over or has new water enter entered into it. There are many ways to define the residence time, but I'm going to find define the residence time, T sub res for residence time, as equal to the volume, which is our control volume, so how much water can this control volume hold how much water is there currently in that reservoir, divided by the sum of the inflows. Now, this equation is a simplification of what the residence time actually is, and I encourage you, if you're interested in this, to read your textbook for more details about the residence time. And that's as simple as the equation is. We're going to run through some examples just to see how to calculate this and compare the residence time for a couple different of the reservoirs in the hydraulic cycle. So the first example I'm going to run through is determining how long does water stay in the average male body. All right, so here's our male. It's the closest en to thing to an engineer that I could find in this program I'm using to make my video. So he's going to stand in for us as our male body. We're going to use the same equation the residence time is equal to the volume of water inside this man's body divided by the sum of all the inflows of water into the body. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to figure out the volume of water in the man's body. So we know a few things here that can help us figure out the volume of water. First, we know that the average man is 70 kilograms and that 60% of that weight is water. So we can figure out 60% of that 70 kilograms leads us to a approximately 42 kilograms of water. Because we also know that the water density is one kilogram per liter, this allows us to say that the volume of water in the man is 42 liters of water. All right, so if we come back over here to our equation, we have our volume, that's 42 liters of water. Now we have to figure out our inflows. So what is coming in to this man? So our inflows are really going to be, what we're looking for is the sum of the inflows. If we think about this, it's really going to be all the water from all the food plus all the water from all the liquid that this guy drinks. Okay. Now everyone's different. Again, we're just going to take an average and we're going to assume that this hipster engineer consumes about one and a half liters per day of water from food and one and a half liters per day of water from liquids. So this means that the residence time in hipster engineer dude male is 42 liters divided by three liters per day, which is equal to 14 days. What does that mean exactly? That means that if you consume something today, a glass of water, it's going to take about 14 days for all of that water to leave your body. Of course, some of it might leave in a couple hours. Some of it might linger around in your blood cells or whatever for much longer. But on average, every particle that you consume today of water, of liquid, is going to last in your body about 14 days. 
Okay, so that's an example that we're not really going to worry too much about in this course. But what we are going to consider is residence time in some of our control volumes. And so in this example, we're going to go through the calculation of finding the residence time of two of the reservoirs in our hydraulic cycle. So first I'm going to ask how long on average does a particle of water stay in the atmosphere? Okay, and then we'll do the same for oceans. So let's start with the atmosphere. So you can see on this hydraulic cycle that the atmospheric water is up here in this yellow reservoir and that the volume of water in the atmosphere at any given time is about 0.013 times 10 to the 15th cubic meters. That's obviously a very large amount. This is the entire atmosphere in the entire um, for the earth. And then we need to identify our inflow. So we're just going to use this simplified, simplified hydraulic cycle here today. And so the inflows are going to be the inflows from evaporation here, and which is off the ocean, and the inflows from evaporation off the land. All right, so you can even see here comparing the evaporation from ocean and the evaporation from land, it is much greater, much more evaporation coming from the oceans and from land, which is to be expected. So for both of these examples, I'm gonna use my same equation that popped up here, that residence time is gonna be the volume divided by the inflows. So when we're talking about the atmosphere, my volume is gonna be that 0 0.013 times 10 to the 15th cubic meters. And my inflows again, going to be equal to the evaporation, if you're hearing that funky noise, that's the dog, from the ocean to the atmosphere plus the evaporation from land to the atmosphere. And this is going to be a total of 423 times 10 to the 12th cubic meters per year. So to figure out the residence time, didn't want you to have to sit through me writing these numbers. So the residence time is equal to that 0.013 times 10 to the 15th cubic meters divided by 423 times 10 to the 12th cubic meters per year, which is 0 0.0307 years, which is a little bit meaningless to us, but we can convert that to a time that makes more sense and that's 1.6 weeks. Okay, so that is a good number to keep in mind and just think about that on average, a particle of water is in the atmosphere for 1.6 weeks. So now we're gonna think about our oceans and figure out the, the average residence time in the oceans. So of course, the first thing we need is our volume. And our volume from the figure provided is 1,350 times 10 to the 15th cubic meters. Again, this is such an unfathomable volume of water, but that's the volume of the ocean. And then the next thing we need is our total inflows. And our total inflows come from two things into the ocean. First is the, per the precipitation from the atmosphere, and that's 324 times 10 to the 12th cubic meters per year. And then we have the runoff uh, from land and groundwater, which is a total of 37 times 10 to the 12th cubic meters per year. So that our total inflow is, so the total inflow into the oceans is 361 times 10 to the 12th cubic meters per year. So first thing I want you to notice right away is that this is actually less inflow than the atmosphere gets, okay? So there's less water total coming into the oceans than there is into the atmospheres. But let's go ahead and calculate the residence time in the ocean. So that residence time, I'm not gonna rewrite these numbers for you. Again, it's that volume, the 1350 times 10 to the 15th cubic meters, divided by that total inflow, 361 times 10 to the 12th cubic meters per year. This leads to 3,000 740 years. Yikes. 
much, much bigger, much longer than the resident's time in that atmosphere, which is kind of to be expected and you probably knew without thinking too much about it. Um, but now we have the math and the calculations to show that.